What is up YouTube? If you are ever in China and you want to purchase anything online, whether it be foods, goods, or transportation, this is the video for you. And guess what? You don't need to know any Chinese to be able to do these purchases online. If you are planning to move or live in China and you want to see any more tips and tricks or more videos like this related content, please hit the like and subscribe button down below. Anyways, let's get started. So I'm going to go through the online monsters in China when it comes to food, online retail shopping, and transportation. For this scenario, I'm going to be going through everything on my laptop because in the laptop, there's usually an English version or you can use Google Chrome to translate everything into English. So I'm specifically going to go into three applications. The first one is Taobao, which is pretty much the eBay slash Amazon of China. The second one is going to be Meituan, which is the Grubhub or the Food Panda of China. And the last one is going to be Xiecheng, which is like the Expedia or the Booking of China. If you're worried about getting the right links and the resources, just look at the description down below and then you can click on the appropriate links based on what you want to buy. Okay, before we get started, I just want to put a disclaimer that it will make your life so much easier if you have the following items for any online shopping in China. Your passport, a bank card, like if you have a bank account in China, a Chinese phone number, either you buy a Chinese phone or you use a certain service to get you a Chinese phone number like Skype, a mailing address for obvious shipping reasons, and Google Chrome, which I'll go into in a second. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna open Google Chrome and set the auto translate function. So this will help you if you don't know any Chinese. What you're gonna do is go on the top right corner and click on the menus, then click on settings. Then scroll down to advanced. Under language, mine is in English. Just drop down, click the drop down right there. And make sure this option is checked. Offer to translate pages that aren't in a language you read. You'll see what I mean and what this does in a second. But if you have this checked, it will automatically translate any Chinese into English on that page. It is really convenient and easy to use. Okay, so now let's get started. So, first you're going to go to Taobao. And remember the function I made you guys do by checking automatically translate? You can see everything is in English now. Very convenient. If you want to change it back, you just click show original. But I just keep it default translated. Now, as you learn more Chinese, I feel like you won't need this, but this is just me showing you step by step. So what I'm going to do is walk you through how to register an account. So iTabao, just click on iTabao. It's going to ask you to log in. This will be my login information, but in your case, if you don't have an account, just go to free registration right here. Agree to the terms and conditions. I already have an account under a phone number, but it makes your life so much easier if you have a phone number. Uh, you just put the phone number in here and then you, you swipe right to verify and it'll give you like a, a six digit code and you just keep on filling out personal information uh, tied to that phone number. So you can pay everything through your phone. But if you don't have a phone number, you can just make up the phone number and it'll give you an option to select an email address. And then you can also register through your email address. But I highly recommend you use a phone so that when you go through the whole process and you set the payment, you can link it directly to your phone and it's very convenient. Okay, so after you've made an account, after you've linked it to your Alipay, I'm going to go through a purchase, so like from start to finish of a purchase you do online. So because there's no official English version, at least not that I know of, I have to use Google Translate for a lot of the stuff. So I'm going to use an example here, uh, the SanDisk 64 gig camera, SD camera, card, memory card. You have to use Google Translate in English to translate into Chinese. So what you do is copy the Chinese version, go back to Taobao, in the search bar, paste the Chinese version, and click on search. I'm just going to go to the first one here for the example, but you just click on the item you want. You can go ahead and check if the specs are right, and this is everything you want. And then you can click on add cart. When you add cart, you'll see a little picture go, woo. <laughs> you can close the window, go back to Taobao, and click on your cart. Here you can see that the item I added my cart to is right here. And uh, I'm going to check it and continue with the settlement. You can either click down here or up here. 
Now this is going directly to Tmall. They have a partnership with Tmall, so don't worry too much about that. Just make sure you have your address properly written down. Uh, if not, you can modify your address, but it is very important that you put the Chinese address just as you would anywhere else in China so that you can get the item as quickly as possible. Or you can also select if there's a, a nearby station where you can pick up a package down below here. Uh, sometimes it gives you the option, sometimes it doesn't, uh, but it's pretty much a Dropbox where they give you a code on the phone and you can, at your own leisure, go pick it up at the Dropbox. So I'm going to go ahead and submit the order. Now, my account is tied to Alipay, which you should have linked when you created your account in the beginning. So you just put in your six digit password and then you confirm payment and then you're, you're done. I'm not going to do that in this example because I don't want to buy this. I'm just making an example for you guys. Let's say you finish buying whatever you need to buy and now you want to track where it's at. It's actually really easy to do. You go to I to bow up here and say, I have bought the baby. Yeah, I know these translations are off, but it's better than not knowing any Chinese and not understanding anything. And I'm going to go with the wireless boy I recently purchased. So you can just go to whatever you recently purchased and click on view logistics. And it will give you the whole journey of where it's at in the process, whether the order has been submitted, the order has been shipped, uh, if the delivery guy is on its way, and if you actually receive the, the package. And you can see exactly what city it's in throughout this whole process and what time of day it's been shipped. And yeah, that's it. Okay, the next one I'm going to show you is how to order food online. Um, this will have to eventually go into your cell phone, but I'll get you started online first. So you just go to this URL up here. You can see it in the description below. And just make sure you have the translate activated. So you know what you're looking at. Uh, I'm going to click I want to take away, obviously. I want to deliver. I don't want to go there and pick it up. Okay, so this would automatically be tied, or should be, to your location based on what internet you're using. So if you're using a VPN, this won't work out well. Make sure you're using like a Chinese internet connection. You can click registration here. This will make life easier when you download the app. So the first line is your phone number, your Chinese phone number. And then you click right here and they'll send you a six digit one-time password. Put the one-time password, then put a real password for your account, and then put the same password for your account the second time, and then click next. So that's how you create an account. But after you've created an account, you can log in. I want to click on order out, as you just saw right there. And let's say I want McDonald's, right? Everyone likes McDonald's and Lo and behold, in China, if you ask people, McDonald's, where is it in Chinese? And you say McDonald's instead of my Dang Lao, they're going to give you like kind of like a weird look. And they're probably not going to know where it is. So always have Google Translate ready. In this case, I typed in McDonald's. And how you say McDonald's in Chinese is my Dang Lao. So you go ahead, copy and paste that into the search bar. Push enter. It, it should show you the nearest McDonald's. Here you go. Guangzhou McDonald's restaurant. You can click on it and you can see the menu. This is a very important part because I'm going to show you how this is going to transition into the cell phone shortly. So let's get a Big Mac. You can't go wrong with a Big Mac. Okay, I'm going to add a Big Mac. I want a Big Coke and large fries. I'm going to add to cart. I'm going to place order now. Now here you see it's going to ask you to download either the iPhone or the Android application, which you can download directly here. You can see I download the Android. But if you go on WeChat and you scan the QR code, you can download it automatically there. I'm in the application now and I'm going to search for McDonald's. As I showed you earlier, using Google Translate, uh, it appears this is the nearest one to my location, the first one. Once I select it, you're going to have to play around with it a little bit because I don't know of an application that translated into English on the mobile version, which is why I showed you on the desktop version how to look at the menu so you can like double check the placement of what you're ordering so that you don't order the wrong thing. Then I'm going to press check out on my phone. 
And when you check out, you're going to see that you have a place to put your address on top. And you get an estimate time of arrival if you were to order right now when your food would get here. And you can look at your carts, double check and triple check. So what you got to do is put the Chinese address of your location. And if you don't know, you can ask your bow on or your security guard downstairs. And then you click next to pay. And you can actually link this directly to your a card or to your WeChat. I usually just use WeChat and you're good to go. After you pay for it, you can actually check the status of the order. Going to the main menu and clicking the receipts. You can see I ordered a lot of, a lot of fast food. Bad me. And if you click on what you recently purchased, it will tell you the status of the order and when it should arrive. The last online shopping I'm going to go over is public transportation, which I really mean is airplanes and maybe train tickets. This is popularly, this application is widely used in China. It's called Sea Trip or Xie Chong. And I'm going to show you how to do it on the desktop version, but you can also do this on the mobile version. Now, luckily, when you go to this URL right here, Sea Trip, you can actually select English language. I wish all of them had this, but they don't. So in this case, I'm going to select English language. Something I want you guys to note that prices will differ based on your region that you select. I have compared prices between China and USA, like if I kept it in Chinese or if I use the English version now, and the prices do differ slightly. Um, actually, it kind of goes both ways. So like sometimes the English version is cheaper than the Chinese version and vice versa. So let's say I want to buy a flight. I mean, this is like using Expedia, so I'm not going to go too much into detail with this, but if you want to buy a flight to Shanghai, let's say I'm in Guangzhou and I want to go to Shanghai. And let's say, make it a one day trip. I mean, if you use any booking for flights and hotel, platform, you definitely know how to use this. So I'm going to select the cheapest one for this example. And the way back, I'm going to book this one. It's pretty cheap to travel within China. It's like 120 bucks. So here you put your personal information, like your passport, first name, last name, date of birth, your contact details. Now, if you're using an American credit card, you'll be fine using an American credit card. But like me, or if you're anything like me, when I'm in China, I don't like touching my American money unless it's an emergency. I like touching my Chinese money. So you cannot buy plane tickets via WeChat using this platform if you're a foreigner. I have a friend of mine pay for it when the QR code comes up to pay for it, and then I just transfer him the money via WeChat. It's a huge inconvenience that when I get over this this hurdle, I'll make sure to make a video for it. But if you want to use Chinese money or Chinese bank account or WeChat, it won't work if you're a foreigner. If you do know any ways that you can bypass this, please let me know. Um, but in the meantime, I don't know any solution like that. But yeah, uh, that kind of wraps it up how to get public transportation. You can also choose trains. The speed train is very convenient in China. You can travel anywhere within China in a good amount of time, and it's actually really economical. So if you want to look at different trains, I'm going to be making a video about public transportation in general in a little bit more detail in the future. So that wraps it up for how to purchase things online in China. Sometimes as a foreigner, it can be kind of hard to do these things if someone can't walk you through it. So if you learned something from this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, suggestions, or ideas that you would like to see in these videos, please write them in the comments down below. Anyways, I'll see you next time.